Hello friends. This is Anime Reality Bender. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto become the Devil Dragon Lord and got harem? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Naruto Uzumaki couldn't help but look back at his life. All the pain, the mean and rude glares, caused by the damn fox sealed in a cage before him now. He had found out what he was through the incident with Mizuki and had come to accept his situation. Not like it, but accept it nonetheless. Now back to the ugly brute of a fox. It stared down at him from its cage as the sewers seemed to crumble around them. Damn you boy look what you have done. You have gone and gotten yourself killed for no reason. You are defiantly worth as much as a pile of shit that you are was one of the man things that it kept repeating. Oh yeah, he remembered that. They had escorted a bridge builder, Tazuna, to wave country and guard him so he could complete the bridge. After fighting the demon brothers and Zabuza, they had finally made it to wave and begin their mission. Problem. Zabuza survived. At the bridge, the Konoha Nin faced off with the returned Zabuza. Of course Kakashi took care of him while Sakura stood guard over Tazuna and Naruto and Sasuke fought Haku. All went south from there, Zabuza managing to defeat Kakashi and Haku disabling Sasuke. Naruto. Well, he transformed from just Naruto to Naruto the pincushion. That is what had led him here, to stand before the fox one last time. Not my fault. He retorted, Haku is the one who had to use so many senbon and turn me into a pincushion. It went back and forth till the sewer that was his mind collapsed completely and in a shriek of pain, the fox was absorbed into what seemed like a black hole. Bad part, the hole took Kyubi but not its power. Naruto stared at the huge sphere of chakra which suddenly cracked and then exploded sending chakra all over. Once Naruto was able to see once more, he realized he stood in front of door settled on a platform with no other way to go. More out of curiosity than brains. Naruto stepped through the door which promptly slammed behind him plus vanishing. On the other side stood two staircases, each leading in their own separate directions. One lead to another door and the other lead to some sort of stone tablet. Naruto out of curiosity walked up the stairs leading to the stone tablet, not noticing that the stairs disappearing behind him. He arrived at the stone tablet which read, Ye who have come to this sacred place. Must make a choice ye who has come to make this choice. Must decide thy fate ye who accepts thy choice must meet the troubled world. Now choose. Death or life strength or weakness hatred or kindness. Demon or hero protector or attacker make thy choice. Naruto stared at the odd tablet and shrugged. He turned around and realized that the stairs were gone. Damn it. Was all he said turning back once more to the tablet. He shrugged once more and said, guess it won't hurt. Life, strength kindness, hero, protector. As he said each one, they began to glow separately. As soon as all the chosen words were glowing the tablet vanished, along with the platform. Shit! Was the last thing Naruto yelled as he descended into the darkness below. Kakashi was defiantly not having a good day. First, his team's C rank mission got bumped to A and then this battle with Zabuza. After being defeated, all he could do was watch as Sakura was beaten defending Tazuna. Who had fled, as Sasuke was seriously injured and finally as Naruto was killed. This was just not his day. The three surviving members of Team 7 were grouped together as Zabuza was joined once more by Haku. Looking down on him, Zabuza said, I thought you would have been more of a challenge Kakashi but I was wrong. You didn't even serve as a good warm-up. He dispelled his hidden mist jutsu, once more revealing the bridge, and Gato's armed men. The shrimp, Gato, said, Ah, Zabuza, so nice seeing you doing your job but sadly I forgot to mention the end of our contract before you left. Enjoy you escape. Signaling his men to move forward he continued, as well as terminating our contract, I'll keep the pink haired brat and that who broke my arm, it'll be so fun to break them. Zabuza was pissed. Not only was Gato stabbing him in the back but he dare threaten Haku, his family. He couldn't move as Gato's men slowly moved forward with gurns on their faces. Out of a sudden those same grins turned to expressions of fear and surprise. Zabuza and Kakashi, realizing that the men's faces were not looked at them but at something behind them, turned around. 
Kakashi let his jaw hit the ground with a resounding thump. Zabuza dropped his sword. For right there the pincushion, I mean. Naruto was slowly rising to his feet surrounded in bright gold chakra. As he stood to his full height, which seemed to have changed because his pants only reached to midway down his shins, the eyes opened to reveal golden orbs mixed with blue, replacing his normal azure eyes. With that came a burst of gold chakra which tore of his ruined shirt and pants, leaving him only with his boxers. Haku, the only conscious female present, couldn't help but drool. This kid was either a god incarnate or chipped out of the finest stone. His perfectly tanned skin glowed in the sun. What caught Kakashi off guard was his student's physique. The blonde he knew was like a regular genin, he did not have much muscle to show off but that had changed for now his student looked like a professional weightlifter. His muscles stood taut and bulged, like if he had been that way for years. They looked to have been made of glistening steel. A. N. Think paladins in Warcraft just on a smaller scale and you get a better picture. I suck at descriptions sometimes. Naruto slowly began to step forward and once more did he shock all present. For his aura of golden chakra expanded into a golden wave and began to condense on him. Golden pants that appeared to be loose-fitting combat pants came first followed by what appeared to be golden combat boots with steel toes. Then came a simple gold shirt followed by a gold jacket just like Naruto's older one just open at the front. On Naruto's hand there came to be gold fingerless combat gloves. As a surprise, the blonde's headband had stayed in place and its cloth turned golden in color. Finally came armor such as shoulder, shin, and forearm guards, also gold in color. Lastly two swords appeared in golden sheets of solidified energy. Naruto began to take up speed as he approached Gato's men. He drew both swords from the sheets, revealing the shining steel of the blades. He started running and zoomed past Zabuza and Kakashi. Kakashi tried to stop him but it was too late for Naruto had reached Gato's men and slot down with his swords. The man being attacked lifted his own sword to guard just to die in exploding blood as Naruto's swords cut through the monk's guard and his body included. From that point on it was a slaughter. Man after man fell to Naruto's swordsmanship. Soon all that was left were ten men plus Gato. These ten men, seeing the ruin and mangled bodies of their comrades ran to the nearby boat followed by Gato, who was stopped by the sudden appearance of Naruto whom said, Fell the pain that you have caused Gato and enjoy you one way ticket to hell. The swords had been sheathed at some point and Naruto clenched his right fist which suddenly burst into flames as he yelled, Hell fire, slamming his fist into Gato. Gato stumbled back and began yelling a horrifying yell as he started to burn sending a smell of burning flesh all around him. Calmly, Naruto stepped forward as the man burned and pushed him over the edge. As Gato fell, the screech intensified and was suddenly cut off with a loud splash. Naruto turned around and stared at Kakashi. Zabuza, Haku and the newly arrived villagers. They stared at the bodies that now surrounded the golden blonde. All he said was. What? Team 7 accompanied by Zabuza and Haku, returned to Tazuna's house. Sasuke was still unconscious but Sakura had come to and stared silently as they walked at the changed Naruto. She had seen the sense around him before the bodies had been disposed of and couldn't believe that his was the same Naruto, the annoyance. By the time they reached the house. The village had heard of the victory and was celebrating. For the rest of the day the team rested and partied alongside the villagers. The next morning though questions had to be answered. Sasuke could feel the chakra coming off Naruto's clothes and challenged him to a fight that morning. Having quietly walked outside they began to spar. Sasuke of course went in confident that he would win, Sakura cheering him on the sidelines. He never stood a chance. No matter what Sasuke did, he couldn't get past the Dobi's guard and any jutsu would just miss. Sasuke ended up on his ass several hundred times throughout the fight, ending in complete embarrassment for the Uchiha. To end it all, as they walked the beaten up Uchiha into the house, the boy had yelled at the blonde, Give me you power. They sat at the table waiting for Naruto's response. It came but not the outburst of, no, they were expecting. You are supposed to be a genius and yet you fell into Itachi's trap so easily. What a big fool you are. What did you say? Sasuke yelled. Sasuke tried to jump at Naruto to only be held down by Kakashi. Mind explaining this trap then Naruto, he said. Naruto focused his golden blue eyes on his team and said, 
first thing you must know is what happened to me. My own bloodline awakened, he was interrupted by Sakura, you have a bloodline. Naruto scowled and continued, yes I do along with another but that's another story. Anyway, it's known as the ancient eye, it's not meant for combat, once more interrupted by Sakura. Then what good is it you dumbass? Naruto didn't scowl this time just barked at Sakura. Shut up damn it and you might just learn something. As I said it's not meant for combat but it's more of a memory bank, containing all the knowledge of my forefathers and past family members directly related trough time. One such person was quite knowledgeable on the Sharingan. This caught Sasuke completely off guard and before he could say anything Kakashi jumped in and said, again, what is this trap? Naruto said, getting to that. My ancestor discovered that the final level of the Sharingan, the Mangekyo, has one dreadful weakness. The more it is used by a person, the closer said person gets to going completely blind. Sasuke let his jaw drop but said anyways, what is the trap then? Naruto looked at Sasuke sadly and said, the only way to cure the problem is to take the eyes of another Uchiha whose Sharingan has reached the same level. Taking them grants immense powers as well as immortality. Itachi left you alive so he could take your eyes. He left you in a state that would have completely under his control, you would do anything to get power. The Mangekyo was what he was using you for. To gain even more power, he used you like you would a tool. That struck Sasuke hard. He didn't want to believe it but with the sincerity in his teammate's voice he just couldn't deny it. He murmured, how do I stop myself? Not realizing that he had said that out loud Naruto responded, pull that damn stick out of you ass and loosen up. Let you heart and not your hate guide you. Several days had passed and the team was ready to head home when they were approached by Zabuza and Haku. Zabuza quickly explained their situation and how they wanted to stop running that it wasn't safe for Haku and how he wanted to give her a chance at living life, without the running part of it, he asked if Konoha would have them. At this point Haku and clamped down on Naruto's arm and done the puppy eye jutsu and said, please? Naruto just couldn't say no at the cute face that peered at him. Oh 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 oh. Forest, team 7 and company moved through the forest slowly lightly talking. Sakura suddenly said to Naruto, didn't you say that you had a second bloodline, what is it? Naruto smiled and said, there should be a clearing up ahead, you see then. The group suddenly came upon a clearing and stopped when Naruto told them to wait there. He raced to the center of the clearing and suddenly was covered in a golden haze. When it cleared all the group could do was stare up in shock. Before them stood a golden dragon, its neck arching high above them. Spikes ran along the back of its neck as well as the beautiful wings that were spread out. The body was thick with well-muscled legs. Its claws appeared to be made of glowing steel. Its long tail ended in some webbing that looked like a fan. Its majestic head had two horns above its pointed ears with scales running along the forehead to the tip of its nose. All in all, the creature before them was beautiful as it glowed in the sun. It lowered its head to eye level and said with wide golden eye, What do you think? They all could stare, speechless and Haku answered for them by saying, You awesome, and giving him a hug on the nose. As she let go Naruto began to laugh, thanks now hop on, he said kneeling down. Without hesitation, Haku hopped on the golden dragon's back soon followed by the rest of the group who were hesitant. Looking behind him Naruto said, use chakra to hold on, this is going to be a bumpy ride. With that he beat his wings and away they flew and he quickly gave a warning, don't look down. Sakura said, why? And looked down, she blanched and said, oh. He he was all Naruto responded as they flew. He flipped upside down, eliciting screams from the people on his back. Don't do that Dobi, yelled Sasuke. Fine, fine, Naruto said. I'm just going to do a stoop and then well fly without any antics. He began to rise as Zabuza piped the question, why do you call this move a stoop? They had reached heights that made the trees below them appear to be fist sized. He suddenly flipped and dived straight down while yelling because it's stoopid. Each of his riders gave a terrifying scream as the dragon they rode straight at the ground, as it seemed that they would not get out of the dive, they became level once again. You idiot dragon don't you dare do that again, screamed Sakura, Haku, and Zabuza. Kakashi was crying because in the dive, his favorite smut book had fallen out of his pouch and landed somewhere. The true surprise came in a yell. 
Let's go again. From, Sasuke. They all stared at the boy they though a brooder, an emo, the one person who had a stick all the way up his ass. Naruto summarized their thoughts in one phrase. What the? Naruto had landed about three miles away from Konoha after covering the distance between Wave and Konoha on a short hour. They had walked the rest of the way pleasantly talking. When they were approaching, they were confronted by Anbu who asked why they had a nuke nin following them. After a quick L explanation of the situation by Kakashi, they were escorted to the Hokage's office where he had to once more summarize why Zabuza was with them. Along the way the Anbu gave Naruto curious glances because of his new appearance and attire. Sarutobi listened to the summary of events and felt that something was missing. It had to do with the new Naruto but he wasn't going to confront him now. So Zabuza I would gladly welcome you but for your crimes you must suffer a six month probation period. Haku on the other hand should be able to start as a chunin right away. The only thing to worry about is where to house you. Sarutobi thought a bit and just got interrupted by Naruto. Let me take care of it Gigi. I'll arrange with you after this meeting. All of them shot curious looks at Naruto but he refused to elaborate. Instead Kakashi shrugged and continued his debriefing of what had happened. He reached the part of what had happened to Naruto and all the Hokage could do was stare in shock. As the debriefing was finished the Hokage dismissed them. Naruto said to Haki and Zabuza, Wait outside, will ya? They both nodded and before leaving the room Haku came over and gave Naruto a quick kiss on his cheek. She said, Thank you, while blushing and left. Sarutobi grinned and said to Naruto, Become quite the ladies man I see. Naruto smiled and said, I guess, after that the boy went completely serious, he looked the old man in the face and said, Gigi I want my heritage. That caught Sarutobi off guard completely, he looked at Naruto and said, what heritage, only to be interrupted. Cut the crap Hokage-sama, because of the ancient eye I know all about my heritage, especially about my father. The Hokage had thought that the thing about Naruto's bloodline had been a joke but by the serious look on Naruto's face the bluff had in fact been true. The Hokage sighed and said, Here, reaching into his desk he pulled out a set of keys and handed them to Naruto. Naruto took them and was given the address by the old man. Naruto thanked the Hokage and left the building soon followed by Haku and Zabuza. Naruto followed the directions the Hokage had given him. He stared at a broad set of gate on the outside of the village. As they opened and passed the gates all the men could do was whistle. The grounds were huge. The grass appeared well kept and when the wind blew it appeared to any viewer that they were standing on an endless plain. The house in the distance was surrounded by forests and the path leading to the house was edged with stone and intricate flower patterns of every color. When the three had walked up to the house and stared at the three-level estate mansion, Naruto unconsciously let his mouth drop and hit the floor with a loud thunk. Slowly Naruto opened the door with a key and the small group walked in, not realizing that they had been followed by a figure that suddenly vanished. Oh 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 oh, council chambers. Serutobi was slowly losing his sanity. Yes, in front of him sat the Ingbasta. I mean, the honorable council of Konoha. They had been once more arguing with him why he had let Naruto become a ninja, saying he was a demon and a hazard to society. He had enough and was about to reveal to them what Naruto had revealed to him. He was about to do so when a man stepped next to Danzo and said something in his ear. The man suddenly grinned evilly and looked to Serutobi before saying, Explain Hokage why you gave the Namikaze estates to the demon? The council along with the clan heads all looked at Serutobi with a mix of anger and confusion. Danzo thought he had the man and with this he would secure his power permanently only to have those thoughts smashed to pieces as Serutobi flared an evil grin of his own. They belong rightfully to him, being Minato's son after all, was all he said. After that the council exploded, not literally, to Serutobi's complete dissatisfaction. The civilian half of the council all started yelling at the aged Hokage in sheer rage, professing that it all must be a lie. The elders, Kaharu and Homura, along with all the clan heads were completely quiet, appearing to be in deep thought. All of a sudden, shut up, came from a slightly irate Shikaku Nara. All stared at him in open shock, for this now yelling man, Shikaku drew in a breath and continued calmly. We should have seen the resemblance. I mean Naruto looks like a complete clone of Minato, from every hair tip to every damn prank. 
it all resounds with the feel of Minato, we were blind as bats. Hiyashi chuckled a bit, I think that the love of ramen came from his mother though. Having met the Mon's wife, the rest of the clan heads chuckled lightly and stopped when the Hokage made his next announcement, he has also unlocked two bloodlines through the course of his recent mission. Everyone gaped at the man. Having two bloodlines was nearly unheard of. Sarutobi quickly grinned and explained the ancient eye. The clan heads had their eyes popping out and Inoichi had the guts to ask, which ones? Sarutobi quickly went over the ancient eye and the dragon transformation to the council. Once more the council was in complete shock. The boy had more knowledge than the whole council combined and not only that, the boy possessed knowledge that none did, making him either a great boon or threat to Konoha. Danzo screamed. He must be executed. He is a danger to all of Konoha. He must be destroyed before he betrays us. Then he was interrupted when the door flew of its handles. As the smoke cleared, there stood Naruto, with a slightly peeved expression. A councilman stood up and yelled, What is the meaning of tea? Only to be set back in his seat by the tremendous amount of killing intent the boys sent on the room. Even the experienced shinobi were having a hard time. I'll tell you, flashback. The house was huge, they couldn't believe it as they walked in through the front door. The entrance had cathedral style ceilings with beautiful crystal chandeliers. There was only one slight little, itty bitty problem with that. The house looked like a tornado had torn through it. They stared in shock and were suddenly pulled out of it when there came a call, found it. The three slowly moved, hands on weapons, down the hall. As they came upon the last room, they saw an opening that contained a staircase leading downwards. Going down the stairs they came upon a group of men whom stood in front of a steel door covered in seals. One at the front said, will only be a matter of time till we can open this, the family vault of the Namikaze. The little problem of the blood seals will only detain us a moment. Danzo-sama and the council will be extremely pleased. The men all nodded and were about to move forward but stopped at the sound of a sword leaving its sheath. They all turned, hands on their own blades. Naruto growled out, Sorry, that vault is off limits to non Namikaze, please leave. The men closest to Naruto said, We have permission of the council to be here, boy, so there are no problems. Besides, there are no Namikazes left. Naruto shook his head and said, No, there is one, and you're looking at him. The same man said, Then you'll have to die. In the name of the council and Danzo sama, die. Root, forward. The men charged. Flashback end. The council stared at the man with scowls, not bothering to hide their guilt. The clan heads on the other hand, along with Serutobi, were extremely pissed. They all stared at the civilian half, all but one seemed guilty, the innocent one being Yoko Haruno. I never, Serutobi began, gave permission for that illegal entry into that house. Enbu arrest them all, except Haruno. Men and women clothed in Enbu uniforms and guards appeared and started to gather the civilian council but Danzo screamed root, to me. No one arrived. Naruto quickly imputed with an evil smile, oops, sorry about that. You see, your men at the Namikaze estate called for their friends to help them when they realized they couldn't beat us. At this Sabuza and Haku brought in several bags filled to the brim with something into the chambers. In total there were fifteen bags. Zabuza flipped one over, smirking evilly. Out of the open end poured out, hundreds of root masks. The council, as they were pushed out, stared in open shock. Danzo just looked like a knife had been slammed into his heart. The clan heads and Yoko looked at Naruto for an explanation. Naruto responded quickly, Shadow clones can do a lot he? After the masks had been picked up and the remainder of the council sat down the Hokage addressed Naruto, Naruto, the clan heads have an issue to discuss with you about. Naruto grinned, It's about the ancient eye, is it not? Shuza Akamichi stood and said, Yes, we are worried that the information you poses could be used against Konoha. What can you say to this? After the man sat down, Naruto said, Ever heard of blood oaths? All nodded and motioned for Naruto to continue. As you realized, these oaths last till either the person completes what he has sworn to do or till he, she dies. But if the person were to break that oath, the person would suffer the worst death anyone could imagine transportation to the hell dimension. It's literally living hell, the person there sees themselves ripped apart, burned you name it. Then they are placed back together painfully and the process repeats itself for eternity. 
The first man to posse's this eye did a blood oath on the eye itself that the information in it will be used to aid others and defend the innocent not to harm or destroy, affecting all in the line. The clans nodded, understanding that the tone Naruto used stated the truth. Hiyashi Hayuga stood and asked, So you have full control of the eye, it seems hard to maintain all that knowledge? Naruto nodded. Thankfully, I can access the information at will, basically I receive the knowledge that I need and then it's placed once more into the eye's vast memory bank. If it didn't, I would be in a lot of pain. The council nodded and the Haruno asked, How does it feel to fly? The clan heads gave her a mad look, being the question was irrelevant. What? was all she said. Naruto just chuckled and said, Ask you daughter being that she rode on my back the whole way home. Sarutobi just chuckled, You didn't scare the crap out of your passengers did you? Naruto just gave a simple answer, Maybe. Oh 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 oh. Next day, bridge leading to training ground 7, to say Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura were not annoyed at the tardiness of their sensei was like saying that fire would not burn paper. Just as soon as Kakashi showed up, hours late, they all screamed, You're late. Hee hee, why do all of you have to have the same reaction as always, was all he said. Continuing, Kakashi said, I actually have an excuse this time. The Chunin exam's happening in a couple of days, you may participate. Here are the forms, see ya then. With that, Kakashi puffed away. They all stared at the forms in their hands. With some sort of awe they filled them out and delivered them at the Hokage Tower. As they left they chatted away about some subject when Naruto suddenly said, No rock is perfectly square you know. The blonde had been looking behind him and when Sasuke and Sakura saw it. A perfectly square box made to look like a rock with two peepholes. The rock then exploded into smoke. You know what was said on the cannon so it'll leave it out. After the genius called Kanahamaru made fun of Sakura's forehead and Naruto's brave attempt to defend his miniature friend, which ended up with both of them being chased by a murderous Sakura. As they rounded the corner, Kanahamaru bumped into a boy wearing black with white and black makeup. The boy's one-piece suit ended on his head with two pointy, ear-like things. On his back was an abject completely encircled in bandages. The said boy growled, Why you little punk? he said picking up Kanahamaru by the collar of his shirt. I'll teach you to watch where you are going. He then poised his fist to punch the little boy when a girl behind him said, Don't come to me if you get in trouble. Said girl was a beautiful blonde who had her long hair arranged into four tails. She also wore a simple battle kimono with a white sash, the kimono being a light pink. On her back, there was a four-foot battle fan. Her figure itself was hidden by the way the kimono fit her but her skin tone presented a beautiful sight anyways. Having spotted Team 7, the boy said, No problem, they look like weaklings anyways. This should be fun, once more pulling his fist back and swung. Before anybody could blink a hand had stopped the incoming fist without seeming to try. At the boy's neck there appeared the tip of a shining steel sword. The boy just looked in fear as the tip came closer and closer to his throat. Slowly lifting his eyes to the face of the sword bearer, realizing it was one of the kids he called weak. I, began Naruto, inching his sword closer to the boy's throat, would put down the Hokage's grandson, unless you would like to start a war. The pink haired girl said, Being you aren't from Konoha, said Sakura, pointing at their headbands. You are here for the Chunin exams. You aren't supposed to simply attack the villagers for a simple accident. Naruto nodded and looked at the boy in the eye. Put the boy down and go think about your actions. Oh and take that redhead boy that is behind the tree with you. While this conversation was going on, the blonde girl gave the boy a curious look over. She was amazed that he wore gold-colored clothing like that. The unzipped jacket gave a view of the golden shirt underneath, and that same shirt gave a tight view of the golden boy's chest muscles. Guessing that the shirt was just a preview she could just imagine the kid's other muscles, and let out a girlish giggle, not heard because the of the conversation. At the last point the blonde had made, she couldn't help but to begin shaking in fear. Said boy was extremely surprised. No one had ever been able to sense him. Now this genin came out of nowhere and sensed him without seeming to try. Hiding his shock, the boy used sand to appear before the pointy ear boy who had at this time released Kanahamaru and stepped back a few steps from Naruto, who was still holding his sword at the ready. Konkuro, you are an embarrassment to Suna, 
I should kill you if I did not need you. Come on Tamari. The three from Suna began to leave when the redhead said, What is your name? Naruto grinned. Uzumaki, Naruto Uzumaki. The boy nodded. Gara Sabaku. I'll see you at the Chunin exams maybe? Naruto nodded and Team 7 watched in silence as the Suna team rounded the corner. Before they were completely gone, the girl, Tamari, looked back at Naruto and gave him a smile, completely mischievous and lustful, and blew him a kiss. Then she was gone. Several days later, Team 7 entered the academy and made their way to the testing room. On the second floor they met a small commotion. The sign above a door said room 301, and apparently two boys were trying to detain the others from entering. Sasuke took a step forward to force his way in but Naruto quickly grabbed his arm and pointed to a sign near the staircase, which said, second floor. Team 7 sneaked by the commotion and went up another level not noticing all the eyes aimed at their back. They had swiftly moved to the real room they were supposed to be in and had settled in a corner. They had wanted, at Sasuke's suggestion surprisingly, just to remain unnoticed. Of course, one particular blonde had a different idea. Sasuke-kun. Yelled a girl whom jumped on him. Get off him Eno pig, yelled Sakura in return. As the two continued to bicker back and forth, after Eno had gotten of Sasuke, the two males of Team 7 had moved away and joined the other rookie teams on the side. You all know their descriptions so no need to emphasize them. You guys here too, came the lazy introduction from Shikamaru. Opening his eyes he realized Naruto knew attire. They heard some barking that came from their right. Choji and Shikamaru turned and their little group was joined by Team 8, consisting of Kiba, Shino, and Hinata. Dobi, started Kiba, Akamaru says that your cloths smell of chakra. Care to explain, trying to sound intelligent. He had not been the only one to notice. A Hyuga by the name of Neji from Konoha Team 9 had sensed the chakra coming off of him and activated his Byakugan, only to widen his eyes in shock as the cloths shined bright with massive amount of chakra. He moved over to be able to listen in. Naruto's answer though disappointed all listeners, me to know you to maybe find out. All groaned, except the said blonde's teammates. Suddenly, a silver-haired team came forward and said, You should keep your voices down, you're making a scene. I'm Kabuto. Sasuke asked in a calm voice, Why you being so handy then? Kabuto grinned, trying to help fellow Konoha Shinobi. We're the best after all. After he had said this, some killing intent was aimed at the Konoha Nin. All of them seemed affected by it in some way, till a spike from Naruto redirected it away with an ease that shocked many. Only one group seemed not to take the silent warning as the rest of the foreign genin took back their killing intent in fear. The genin team from Sound seemed to have issues with their pride. Said genin must have been stupid but charged at Naruto, being that he had retaliated against their killing intent. Little did they know how useless. The Konoha Genin saw the sounds charge but were in no position to stop or even delay it. What even caught them by surprise was the fact that the members of Team 7 seemed to not be bothered. Ino, having stopped her heated discussion with Sakura, said, Aren't you going to help him? Sakura smiled at Ino and answered, Don't need to. As if on cue, the moment the sound nin, that seemed to wear some sort of gauntlet with holes on top, struck out at Naruto, and missed. Next thing the said Genin knew there was a sword to his throat. The other two did not even get a chance to move before they were met with the same situation. The second boy on the team, medium height with spiky brown hair said, Just Bunshin, nothing much, he moved forward, only to realize that he had met resistance and was now lightly bleeding at his neck. The rest of the rookie Genin had a look of complete shock on their faces. Kabuto could be seen on the side, looking over some card before ripping it into pieces. Before anyone could get out any remarks, quiet down, yelled a man as the smoke that suddenly, he pointed a finger at the now released sound team. You, one more outburst and it'll disqualify you. Now sit, pointing to the arranged chairs. You all know what happened here, so I'm skipping it. Only difference is that Naruto doesn't panic at the test and answers all question in less than 15 minuets. Now back to the story. You pass was all that Morino Ibiki said as he realized that no more genin would leave the test room. The shocked faces that realized what he had just said never had a chance to relax as suddenly a black ball came in through the window and exploded into a cloud of smoke. As the smoke cleared, there hung a sign that read, 
Anko Midarashi, second exam proctor. Said women then stood next to the sign as the smoke continued to clear. The men in the room couldn't help but let their jaws drop. There stood a woman in a mini skirt with what appeared to be a fishnet shirt. It was tight and the endowment of her chest was quite apparent. Over that she wore a simple light brown jacket, unzipped. She said, I'm Anko, you little brats. I can't believe Ibiki let this many pass but no matter by the time I'm done with you, there'll only be about half left, let's go. The remaining genin soon followed Anko out of the building. They all chatted quietly about some random subject. Naruto had quietly been talking to Hinata, the girls that had sat next to him at the first exam. They had been talking pleasantly about their missions and what each one would do to that damn cat. Both were silently laughing at the poor cat's expense. It had better pray not to meet them again. Finally, they stopped at a huge fence encircling a dense forest. Anko began. Welcome to Training Area 44 also known as the Forest of Death. This forest will be the location for your final exam. She heard a snicker and turned to Naruto. You have something to say brat? Yep, Naruto said, nothing scary about this forest to call it the forest of death, it must be a big joke. Anko snarled and threw a kanai at Naruto. All Naruto did was tilt his head to the side but Anko had appeared behind him holding another kanai to his throat. She was about to make a wise ass comment but then she felt a tip brush her abdomen. Looking down she let her mouth drop. A kanai was neatly tucked in the boy's hand and its tip ready to thrust upwards. Not only would Anko have not been able to kill Naruto before he killed her but he would have disrupted her position as well. Looking back to Naruto she said, I like you, maybe we could get together sometime? Only if you buy? Naruto replied, deal, said Anko. Out of nowhere a grass genin came over and returned Anko's kanai complaining about how it had ruined her beautiful hair. As this was going on Naruto had joined his teammates, who were giving him smiles. What? asked Naruto. Sasuke's smile grew even wider as he said, quite the ladies man I see. Care to share some of your infamous knowledge on the mystery known as women? Naruto said, be yourself and take that stick out of your ass. Sasuke scowled but halted the retort being interrupted by Sakura whom said, he's right. No woman in her right mind would like the attitude a man has with a stick up his ass, it's all that's preventing me from jumping you. Naruto and Sasuke looked at their female teammate with gaping mouths. After a few silent seconds, Naruto collapsed laughing at the comment pointing at Sasuke, saying, What are you going to do now Teme? Wheezing between breaths. Sasuke just replied in a shocked tone, I don't know. Run, maybe. Good idea, I would start now, said Naruto. With that both of them sped away from a pissed of Sakura, realizing what she had just said in public. She chased after them in an animal-like rage. Both boys from Team 7 had received their scroll and had moved to their assigned gate. Just as they arrived they heard a banshee screech coming from behind them. Turning around they saw Sakura charging at them in rage. Lucky for them, the exam started at that exact moment and the two of them were able to run into the forest as fast as they could. They finally were able to slow down because Sakura tired out but that was not the only reason. They were being followed, pretending not to notice it Team 7 continued moving forward, ready to defend themselves from an obviously powerful opponent. Just as they were about to move forward a massive killing intent came from behind them. Before they were completely frozen they were able to turn around only to find that grass nin that had returned Anko's kanai with her tongue. Well, well, she said as she approached. Kanai in hand, look what I have here. A rookie team that does not know what it's getting into. What a shame, looks like if you survived you would have made good opponents but sadly it seems like that is not going to happen. Enjoy the afterlife, goodbye. The nin threw the kanai at the panicked genin. Both Sakura and Sasuke lives flashed before their very eyes and what may have happened had they not been about to die. The things that they wanted to secretly do to each other, ah the perversion, it burns. As the kanai were about to impact the frozen genin, they rebounded off the shining light of Naruto's steel blade. The grass nin stared at the boy, whose eyes showed no fear at the killing intent launched at him. Get out of here, I'll deal with this, he said to his now recovered teammates. But, Sakura tired to say but was interrupted by Naruto, whom responded, I'll be fine, he won't beat me, trust me, okay. Sasuke nodded and said, 
you better come back alive, Dobi. Naruto grinned at Sasuke. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Knowledge was not all I inherited from my ancestors. Sasuke's eyes widened for a moment before shrinking as he nodded. Grabbing Sakura he jumped into the trees and speed away. What nobility, said the grass nin. You sacrifice yourself for your friends. How stupid could you be boy? Not stupid, Naruto said as he moved his hand to his eyes, removing the contacts that were in place to hide his true eyes. He let them blow in the wind as he released the contacts from his hand and turning to the mysterious Nin and said, But very, very confident of me kicking your ass, Orochimaru. With Sakura and Sasuke. Sasuke we have to go back, he needs us. Sakura yelled at him, trying to work herself out of his grip. Sakura relax and think about what he said, was the only reply Sasuke said, not letting go of the pink girl he was holding on to. Sakura stopped struggling and repeated what Naruto said, knowledge was not all I inherited from my ancestors I don't get what you're pointing at Sasuke. He grinned at the girl and said, you're supposed to be smart, think about it, he got the knowledge but what if he inherited his ancestors power or even a fraction of it. Sakura seemed to take a thing posture but after a moment calmly said, if you're right, I'm sorry for whomever pisses him off. Back to Naruto. The grass nin looked at the blonde in front of him and tilted his head sideways and said, What are you talking about? Naruto quickly replied, Cut the crap Orochimaru. You give off the smell of snakes and that killing intent could not come off a genin. It was too much for anyone below or at chunin level. You gave yourself away you dipshit. The nin suddenly narrowed his eyes and said, Observant are we. No matter though, you will die here. Naruto smiled and said, Bring it on. The grass nin disappeared only to reappear behind Naruto and attempting to stab him the back with a kunai. That was not working being that Naruto had seen it coming and angled his sword behind him to intercept the attack. For what seemed like hours that is all the two combatants did. They clashed steel against steel neither injuring the other. They finally separated and stared at each other calmly sporting their weapons at their sides. You are good boy I admit that but you don't stand a chance, said the Sanin trader, once more unleashing his killing intent on Naruto. It did not end there as Naruto not only matched the Sanin's killer intent but he surpassed it. The man glared at Naruto in shock at the relevance of the little fact that here was a boy that easily surpassed him in power. Who know what are you? asked the snake. A shinobi, nothing more nothing less, said Naruto taking in a deep breath. Just as he finished, he blew the air out which in turn speed towards Orochimaru, sprouting a dragon's head as a name came forth from Naruto's mouth, Wind Dragon Missile. Orochimaru barely dodged the attack only to be met by another dragon missile, sending him through the tree behind him. That had hurt him badly but retaliated sending a huge summoned snake after the boy only to have the snake turn to ash as fire poured out of the young boy's mouth. The Sanin could see how hopeless for him this situation was. No matter what he did he could not get past his mere child's expert defenses. All he could do was charge again and again but still he couldn't get through. But then, it got even worse. Naruto, in an impeccable example of speed, got behind Orochimaru, and removed his arm. To say that Orochimaru was scared was like saying that all cats like to swim in water. He was nearly on the verge of soiling his pants, badly. Naruto stood there and watched the heavily bleeding Sanin. You suck man. Orochimaru you are supposed to be some great ninja and look at you, beat by a genin. I didn't even get to use five of my power, said Naruto. Orochimaru just stared in horror at the boy as he used a jutsu to recover his arm. The boy hadn't even been serious and yet had beaten him head as if he was. He decided what he had to do, run. After his arm was recovered, Orochimaru used a combination of a smoke bomb with an exploding tag to cover his retreat, in Sasuke's and Sakura's direction. Damn it! yelled Naruto as he ran in the direction of his teammates. After about 10 minutes, he found Sakura and an unconscious Sasuke. Sakura, what happened? asked Naruto as he joined his companion. This weird snake guy came out of nowhere and gave Sasuke a nasty hickey, said Sakura, pointing to Sasuke's neck, where there was a three tome seal. Damn it! I got cocky and he got away from me, sorry about that, Naruto replied. Never mind that, what are we going to do? asked Sakura, staring down at the unconscious Sasuke. Naruto suddenly had a teal glow to his hand and placed it above the seal on Sasuke's shoulder. 
After a moment, he removed his hand and said, We have to go to the caves nearby, I'll explain everything when we get there. As soon as they arrived Naruto placed a barrier over the entrance and sat down next to Sakura while he said, The seal seems to affect his mind. It's trying to lure him to follow Orochimaru is my best guess. Sakura said, Again, what do we do? Naruto grinned and said, We have to go into his mind and help him through this. Sakura, not wanting to lose time because of shock, nodded and sat cross-legged next to Sasuke's right side while Naruto sat on his left. Naruto placed his hands and at unimaginable speeds ran through what seemed like thousands of hand signs. He stopped suddenly and placed a hand on Sasuke while the other firmly grasped Sakura's hand. With that all went black. Sasuke's Mindscape Naruto and Sakura stared at their surroundings. They stood on an old-style, wooden deck, surrounded with a small but neat banister. Beyond that was just an endless field of a flaming orange, all around them in fact. They heard some sobbing and they turned to find Sasuke and his mini-me. The mini-me was crying as well as saying, because I did not have enough power my whole clan was killed, I need power, I need power, I need more power. At this point the mini-me was replaced by Orochimaru whom said, Come to me Sasuke and I'll give you all the power you could want. Come to me and you will be able to kill Itachi, come to me. Orochimaru beckoned Sasuke forward to take his hand, a hand of power. The boy slowly moved forward only to stop at a voice, so that's it? Sasuke and Orochimaru turned and saw Sakura and Naruto standing there, Naruto with a look of contempt on his face. What? Sasuke said, I need power to avenge my clan. This is the only way to get it fast and I don't care what will happen. I need to avenge my family, the family that I will never have again. Naruto glared at Sasuke while Sakura began to cry at his side. She said, Then what about us? Aren't we considered your family, in everything but blood at least? Naruto said, Is that all you are going to do, walk the paths that other have prepared for you? What happened to walking your own path, with your own two legs? You are such a moron if you forgot that already. Sasuke looked at Naruto in shock and started to laugh. Sasuke then smiled and said, Damn you're right. My whole life I was chasing for a way to kill Itachi, following the path he set for me. Now you, pointing to Orochimaru, are trying to make me walk a path made by you. I can't, won't, do that. I will walk my own path, on my own two legs supported by my friends whom support my choices. So Snake, thanks but no thanks. Get out. With that, the apparition of Orochimaru burst into flames and vanished. Sasuke turned back to his friends once more only to be tackled by a worried Sakura. What surprised him was what Naruto said next. You know, for an upstart Uchiha you have good tastes. Sasuke curiously looked around himself and let his jaw drop along with Sakura's. The same deck was still present but instead of the surrounding flaming orange field there were clear blue skies with small clouds floating there. Around stood an immense plain of grass with mountains in the distance. A calm breeze blew, making the plain appear like the shore of the ocean with its waves. Yeah I do, he said. Naruto and Sakura stood and said, well then we will see you on the outside, and with that they vanished. Sasuke smiled and was about to return to his body when, wait. Sasuke turned around and fell in shock, real world. Naruto opened his eyes. It was dark outside the cave but there was enough light to give him a small sight inside the cave. There they were, Sakura and Sasuke, curled up holding each other close. All Naruto did was pull out his secret camera and snap a picture as silently as possible. He then put the camera away and waited for them to wake up. As he waited, some movement outside the cave caught his eyes. He got up and moved to the entrance, only to meet several thrown kanai and shuriken which were stopped by the barrier. He heard some loud cursing from the outside along with, Damn, did not expect a barrier, what do we do? Another voice came out, We wait, they can't stay in there forever. Naruto waited as the newly awakened Sasuke and Sakura joined him and he explained the situation the sun was slowly rising but still, the three could not see that well in the cave they were trapped in. Sasuke put on a grin and said, Don't worry, just drop the barrier. Naruto shrugged and did so. The three slowly left the cave only to be assailed by more flying kanai and shuriken. They blocked and dodged them all without a scratch on them. The three sound nin popped out in front of them. 
Ah so you finally have come out to play. About time you know that, said the sound nin known as Dosu. Yeah, yeah now I get to kill something, said the other male sound nin called Zaku. The other, identified as Kin, just stood there silently staring at Team 7. Naruto grinned and said, the team from Otto, why am I not surprised, how is Orochimaru? Zaku yelled, how do you know Orochimaru-sama? Naruto just said, he challenged me to a fight and lost. By the way, don't bother using your sound-based techniques, I've got them figured out. The nin stood in shock. If this boy had figured out their style of fighting and jutsu they were in trouble, even if he had not defeat Orochimaru which was very hard to believe. So which one do you want Sasuke? Asked Naruto turning to his companion. The friend answered, the one with the gauntlets looks like fun. Naruto made eye contact and let his jaw drop. Sasuke no longer had the tome Sharingan but he now had one with what appeared to be a fang instead of tomes or a shuriken. Sasuke smirked at Naruto. Like it? With this I will walk my own path. Naruto smiled at the remark. The Chimera Sharingan suits you Sasuke. I guess I got cannon arms. Sakura just helps us out with long range attacks, okay. Sakura nodded and moved behind her teammates. Naruto drew his swords as Sasuke got into a new and unfamiliar taijutsu stance. They stared at each other, unmoving. Suddenly Naruto moved appearing behind Zaku and hit him on the head with the side of his blade, knocking him out. Not even worth the challenge. Dosu had seen the skirmish and let his guard down slightly, giving Sasuke the perfect opening. He rushed forward and commenced a fierce taijutsu fight against Dosu who was losing miserably. Sakura asked Naruto a question when he joined her, what happened to Sasuke? Must have happened when we left his mind. The Sharingan is called the Chimera. It's an extremely rare version of the Sharingan on par with the Mangekyu but it's completely different. The Uchiha never liked the Chimera for some reason and did everything they could to exterminate it. Thankfully, it does not have the effects of the Mangekyu. Now he has a whole new style of fighting that comes with its own jutsu. It's what one can only call a legendary bloodline. Suddenly Sasuke yelled. Chimera technique. Snake piercing rip. He launched his right arm outwards and it seemed to hook on to Dosu's gauntlet. With a violent twist he ripped the gauntlet off, breaking the sound nin's arm in the process. Instead of trying to fight further, Dosu grabbed his unconscious teammate and moved to escape. Oh no you don't, yelled Sakura whom threw kanai at the nin. All Dosu did was grab Kin and force her behind him, to take the kanai in the back. The pain the wounds caused her made her lose her balance and fall out of the tree. The fall would have killed her had not Naruto appeared and caught her. But that momentary distraction was all Dosu needed because at that moment, he and Zaku vanished into the surrounding darkness. Working at incredible speeds, Naruto removed the kanai from Kin's back and was able to heal the puncture wounds. Knowing that the knowledge had come from the ancient eye, Sakura and Sasuke just inspected her weapon pouches, finding the scroll they needed to enter the tower. When Naruto was done, Kin woke up looking straight at Naruto's eyes. Her heart skipped a beat, as those eyes seemed to stare straight into her soul. She could not stop herself as she buried her face into his shoulder and began to cry. All Naruto did was pat her shoulder and hold her clothes. The tam began to move at last towards the tower. Hey Sasuke, said Naruto. I have something to say to you. What? asked Sasuke, staring at his friend. I know of a seal, it's like an adoption seal that was used in ancient times between brothers in arms on the fields of war as a sign of eternal friendship and unity. Would you like to use that seal with me? Sakura jumped in and said, Me too. Smiling. Sasuke was shocked but did not even hesitate and nodded his head. They stopped for a moment and put their hands atop one another and murmured in unison. We who are alone we who have suffered we who have felt the pain. We chose to stand next to the other we chose to fight by each other. We chose to live by each other as friends, brothers, sisters, family. So we swear to stand for eternity as family in arms. Their forearms began to glow. As the glow faded there stood a seal, stretching from the wrist to the elbow. There was a sword with three emblems surrounding it, a cherry bloom, the Uchiha fan and a small dragon's head. There they were a family in arms. Team 7 and their new friend Kin arrived at the tower and entered it, opening their scrolls in that riddle thing. After the little chat with Aruka, 
The team moved to the sitting room where they met the team from Sand. They had a few days left so they realized they could settle down to rest. Well, at least the other two members of Team 7 as Anko suddenly burst the door down. Where are you, Uzumaki? She yelled. Naruto looked at her and raised his hand, only to have it grabbed by the insane women and him being drugged out with a look of shock on his face. His teammates merely sighed and Sakura said, should we pray for his safety? Sasuke and Kin replied lazily, nah. Oh 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 oh. You? Yelled Anko into Naruto's face. Well tell me how the hell you kicked Orochimaru's ass and made it seem like a cakewalk. Naruto said, I don't have to tell you, a shinobi must keep his secrets, but if you watch me fight you will see what I mean. Anko scowled and dropped his with a loud bang. Anko, came a concerned voice. You shouldn't treat a genin like that. There stood Kurinai, a good friend of Anko's staring at her with worried, ruby red eyes. A, N. You know how she looks like. Genin my ass, she said, he nearly killed Orochimaru, so I know he is hiding something. Naruto stared as Kurinai began yelling at Anko about the impossibility but that is not what Naruto was staring at. It was the small tattoo on Anko's shoulder. Excuse me? He asked. Both women looked at him and he continued. That Hickley looks horrible good thing I was able to remove from Sasuke. Kurinai looked at him with shock while all that Anko did was slam him into the wall. That is a lie, he hissed, it is irremovable. Naruto grinned, want to bet? Anko looked at him as he was insane before letting him go. She looked at him and said seriously, this better not be a joke, what do you need? Kurinai just gave her friend an odd look but just shrugged. It is not a joke. Ask Sasuke but all I'll need is a room where we won't be disturbed. If you have a real close friend that will help a lot too, was all Naruto said. Anko looked at Kurinai who nodded. The three moved to an empty, dusty room in the top of the tower. Having asked Anko to lay down, Naruto used a jutsu to put Anko to sleep. Before Kurinai could respond, Naruto grasped her shoulder and with a glowing hand, placed it on Anko's forehead, entered the sexy woman's mind. Anko's mindscape. It was dark, not a speck of light or sound was the inside of Anko's mind. That was the condition that Kurinai and Naruto entered too. Naruto looked around the space and said, Damn, this could be a little bit harder than I thought. Kurinai looked at him in confusion and said, Why do you say that? See this darkness. Kurinai nodded. It point to extreme depression and mental trouble. The seal is probably to blame for this as well. Kurinai looked at the genin next to her as they began to move. Suddenly they heard what sounded like sobbing. They rushed in the direction and let their jaws drop in complete surprise. There to the dark wall, was Anko, as a young child, chained to it, staring at Orochimaru slightly below her. He had what appeared to be a picture in his hands and was ripping it to pieces while saying, Connections make you weak, friends will only bring you down. Your mother was a worthless whore and you will be the same unless you let her go. Friends will let you die because to them you are worthless. Kurinai couldn't take it anymore, you are wrong. Orochimaru turned and pounced on Kurinai, transforming into a giant snake. Time seemed to stop as the snake's big maw approached a panicking Kurinai. All Anko did was watch as the snake descended on Kurinai. You just going to let her die? Spoke a voice next to her ear. There was Naruto looking at Anko in the eye as her head slowly moved to face him. He asked again. You just going to let her die? Anko just dropped her head and did not answer. Then what a weak woman you are, Anko Midarashi. She snapped her head back at him and glared at him without hiding her rage. She, Naruto said to the frozen Kurinai, stood for you a lot, helping you out all the time. Yet here you are, willing to let her die, why do you listen to this bastard anyways? Is it because he was your only pillar of support? I have news for you Anko that support never existed. Kurinai is the true support, a true friend, and you are just going to let her die. Tell me, who is in control here, you or him? Who is the person this mind belongs to? Who knows what is truly right for her? What he said was wrong Anko. Connections only make us stronger for there is something there worthy to protect, something to fight to the death for. Now answer me this, are you just going to let your only friend die? Anko looked to Kurinai as time seemed to resume its regular speed. The snake descended on the petrified Kurinai. Ma opened wide, just to slam into some barrier of sorts, 
forcing it back in a hiss of pain. Leave her alone, came the voice of the now adult form Anko, whom had not only broken the chains but had ripped out a considerable portion of the wall as well. She then charged a proceeded to beat the living crap out of the huge snake. Naruto and Kuranai stood there watching Anko doing her thing, wincing every now and then when they heard a nasty crack. Then it was over, there lay a severely beaten Orochimaru as Anko slowly approached him, she said, you destroyed everything in my life. My hope, my dreams, my family and my friends. No more. My life is my own, my choices are my own. Friends and family only make you stronger. Go burn in hell you piece of ing shit so I can finally have a life. I can finally have a family, I can finally have friends. Burn. In. Hell. Just below Orochimaru a trap door opened and with a violent scream, Orochimaru fell into the flames it held. As the trap door slammed shut, the blackness around the three began to crack, soon spreading the area all around them with miniature fissures. They suddenly exploded in and sudden burst of light that three had to turn their heads away. As the light began to fade, both Kuranai and Enko heard a slow whistle coming from their right. They opened their eyes and let their jaws drop to let their own views of astonishment join the ones of Naruto. There they stood on a fancy pavilion settled into the side of a mountain covered in thick forest. Right alongside the pavilion ran a set of twin rivers leading down the mountain among the trees towards the distant ocean. There above the ocean line, sat the setting sun, hidden behind small clouds, filling the sky with a set of infamous colors. Naruto turned to Anko and said, a beautiful mind for a beautiful woman. She couldn't help but blush as he said that. Naruto smiled and said, see you on the outside. He vanished and with a final smile at Anko so did Kuranai. Reality, Naruto slowly opened his eyes and let he drifted into reality once more. He stood as Kuranai began to leave and stopped when, wait. There stood Anko, staring at him with weird eyes, she had just a moment ago checked her neck in the mirror. The cursed seal that had been there for so many years was gone. And there stood the boy that had changed her life for the better. Is there any way I can repay you, any way at all? She asked. Naruto shook his head and said, No, I'm just helping out a friend and that will always be free on my part. But Anko would not back down and said, Please let me pay you back, there has to be a way to do that. Naruto sighed and said, Just pay for that date you mentioned earlier and we will call it even, and he left the room. Anko was doing the victory dance in her head for nailing such a good guy when Kuranai said, Not if I get him first, as she chased after him. It took a few seconds for Anko to realize what Kuranai had just said before screaming out a war cry and charging right after her. So started to first intense rivalry for Naruto, let the fight begin. Lounge area. The other two members of sound team had shown up a few moments after Naruto was dragged away by Anko. After a few more hours the rest of the teams arrived, all beaten and injured except for team 7 and the team from Suna. Just as a chunin told them to move towards the center arena Naruto showed up next to his team and kin, whom eyed him suspiciously, and said, What did I miss? Sakura answered, nothing much but what took you so long naruto grinned just helping out a friend that had a nasty hickey from snake bastard the team got the hint and left it at that but kin let her eyes widen in shock he was able to remove the curse seal maybe i can really trust this guy naruto looked at kin's and asked kin chan everything all right she smiled and nodded as she followed them still in deep thought arena after Serutobi gave his little commencement speech the preliminaries began. Sasuke won his fight pretty quickly and without trouble at all. If you guys wanted to see this, tough shit. The randomizer rolled though the remaining names as Sasuke's opponent was taken out of the arena on a stretcher. Sakura Haruno vs Ino Yamanaka Naruto said, interesting. Sasuke nodded but almost fell over at Naruto's next words when the girls made it to the floor. So, which girl will you support being that you love them both? Sasuke looked over at Naruto and said, I do not know what you are talking about. Naruto gave him an evil smile, when I got rid of the nasty hickey, on my way out I took a wrong turn in your mind, and ended up with nearly two tons worth of blackmail material, so don't deny it. Sasuke began to sweat and cry in his head at his misfortune. Knowing Naruto the wrong turn had been an accident. Both girls soon got serious after a brief spell of bickering and started to actually fight. 
having used her hair Eno was able to take over Sakura and was about to force her to surrender when, you going to let Eno win Sasuke over Sakura, you going to lose your love to her? The voice of Naruto said over the eerie silence. Eno smirked from within Sakura and mentally said, no matter, nothing you say will get her out of this, it's over. She was about to force the surrender when she suddenly couldn't move anymore and Sakura's voice came from the back of her mind, get thee out Eno. Suddenly Eno felt herself literally being thrown from Sakura's and back into her own body with devastating force. She turned around ready to fight again, with Kanai in hand but stopped at the sudden glow that surrounded her body. Slowly her cloths began to turn white along with her headband. On her back there suddenly sprouted feathered wings that were twice as long as she was tall. She extended her hand forward and an orb formed out of the air which flew to her hand. In an explosion of light, she was holding a magnificent white lance. The shaft was at least eight feet long, carved out of what seemed white wood. The blade was a shining piece of steel forged to resemble the appearance of angel wings. There before Eno, floated an angel. Bannisters. The viewers could only stare in absolute shock at what had just happened. What seemed like Sakura was going to lose suddenly turned into a sudden show of brilliance as the light receded, revealing Sakura in her new form. Kakashi! yelled Asuma, what the hell you teaching these kids? A jutsu like that is not in their power limit. Kakashi responded, I did not teach her that nor anything near it nor do I know what it is, but I do know who does, turning to Naruto. Kiba smirked and said, what would Naruto, the dead last know? Little did he know the wanting stare that Kuranai had behind him, aimed at said boy. Naruto removed his new pair of contacts revealing his ancient eye. There was a sound of intaken breath as the situation caught up. It is the Angelos, Naruto said, a bloodline thought to have been lost centuries ago. As you can see, the bloodline gives angel-like characteristics to its bearer. Sasuke asked. Why does that lance seem to be important if the design is any pointer? Naruto grinned. The Angelo's warriors all had weapons that determined the rank. The finer the weapon the better the position. Lance bearers were held to the highest esteem being the rarest and the most powerful. A side effect of the weapon was that they could not learn to use anything other than said weapon being they knew all about it already in their subconscious. A girl dressed in a pink Chinese shirt with a loose pair of brown slacks and had her hair put up in two buns said, You mean she already knew how to wield that lance? Naruto nodded and continued, She also knows how to use her bloodline to the utmost because of an ancient seal placed on tea by her ancestors, that includes all the techniques that come with it. All in all, Ino is screwed. Shikamaru asked, Why is that? Naruto grinned, Because, lance bearers were known for their ferocity and their skill winning battles on their own against thousands. Arena, Ino stared as her former friend began to beat her wings, rising slowly into the air, hefting her new lance in her right hand while her left became covered in a small buckler. This is new, she said as her voice came to, which sounded just a bit more calm and divine. Nah, really, replied Ino sarcastically. Sakura smiled from above her and, dived. Sakura came at Ino with unimaginable speeds and thrust her lance downwards without a second's hesitation. Ino managed to dodge but barely made it as the tip entered the concrete without a sound. Slowly Sakura pulled out the tip to reveal that the blade was unharmed, but that there now was a hole in the ground with a completely clean cut. Ino decided then and there not to be hit by that very sharp object. The thrusting by Sakura continued until the extreme show of skill Sakura used her lance as a point of leverage swung herself on it and slammed her foot into Eno's chest. With a scene speed she had the tip to Eno's throat and said, It's over. Eno just looked at her friend with fear as the proctor said, Winner Sakura Haruno. Sakura settled down on the ground and removed her lance from Eno's throat extending her hand. Eno smiled and took it, using the given force to get up and with Sakura's help, limp over to the stairs up to the banister. As they walked, Sakura once more reverted to her old form as if a veil had been placed over her angelic qualities. As they came up the stairs, they met their senseis whom told them that they had done a good job, afterwards being congratulated by their own teams. Sasuke came over to both of them and was about to say something when Naruto decided to put his two cents in. Who you going to kiss first, Romeo? Naruto asked. You could hear the wiping sound as most of the Konoha nin heads snapped into his direction. He said with an evil smile, 
Sasuke had been knocked out thanks to some weird jutsu so I had to enter his mind to wake him back up. It worked but on my way out I kind of took a wrong turn and met with, what I guess you could call, precious people folder. In there were the usual images of his family and. Sasuke instantly was there and growled, you wouldn't dare? Naruto's evil smile only grew as he said, I dare Sasuke, there in that folder were very detailed images of both Sakura and Ino. Both girls stared at Sasuke and then looked at each other. A silent message was passed between both of them and they turned back to Sasuke, with mischievous grin as they moved forward seductively. Kiba asked, knowing Naruto's answer, just how detailed are we talking Naruto? Naruto immediately picked up as Sasuke began to shake in fear and said, he had every detail from the tips of the hair down to every little CU. At this point Sasuke had covered Naruto's mouth with his hand and pulled him away. If you say anything more I will kill you, snarled Sasuke. But Sasuke, just hooking you up is all, Naruto said in fake innocence. Shut up, was all Sasuke said as both friends returned to the group and to the smiling girls. Naruto chuckled and started back at the monitor which read, Hanada Hyuga vs Neji Hyuga. Neji grinned and began to move down the stairs quietly. Before Hinata could though, Naruto grasped her shoulder and said, Can I ask you a favor Hinata? She nodded in shock, realizing that her crush's hand was on her shoulder. He continued, I would like to make a bet you win your match I owe you two favors within the boundaries of the law. You lose, you owe me one favor and an explanation to why you always blush around me, deal. Before she even knew what was going on she nodded and he smiled and let her go. She proceeded down the stairs and stared at Neji. A. N. The fight goes just according to the canon but at the end come my own twist. Hanada got up slowly and stared Neji down, he said, just give up Hanada, it's useless. Hanada smiled at Neji and replied, never. Neji scowled and began to charge, as Hanada watched helplessly as Neji approached for the final blow time seemed to slow down. Why do you stand? A voice said from behind Hanada. Hanada turned around and let her jaw drop as she stared at the creature before her. It repeated, Why do you stand? You are weak, why do you remain standing? Because, she huffed, I have a bet to win and because the one I love wouldn't back down in the face of others so neither will I. It is useless, you will just die. Then I die fighting for him, she responded. I like you. The creature responded, Let us win him over together then young one. You pass the test that I have presented before thee. Go now and show this upstart prodigy whom is the true Hyuga. Bannisters. Hanada began to glow before the whole audience. Neji stopped and stared at his cousin with distaste wondering what was going that he did not hear the conversation that soon would happen behind him. What the hell is going on? Asked Kiba. The rest had the same thoughts in their heads but they all stopped as they heard the clink of a hand on a sword hilt. They all looked at Naruto whom had a worried look on his face with his sword half drawn. They all grew worried and turned back to Hinata. For just a few seconds the glow increased in magnitude and something came into being behind Hinata. It looked much like a horse but slightly bigger, purely white with a long white horn on its forehead. It raised itself on its two hind legs and vanished. Naruto smiled and relaxed his hand, letting his sword re-enter its sheath at the disappointment of Ten Ten whom thought the sword was the finest she had ever seen. Sasuke looked at Naruto and said, What the hell was that? Naruto looked to the group and said, I'll tell you later but just to say, he looked back to the fight, Neji is royally ed. Arena. Neji did not know what to say at the sudden appearance and disappearance of the mysterious creature. He shrugged it off and charged at Hinata, full speed intending to kill her. He thrusts his pal forward towards her heart, only to find that he was not there. He looked around but never saw her blow till it landed on his head, sending waves of pain down his spine. When he turns in the said direction he only sees her for a bare moment before a palm is slammed to his chest, knocking the air right out of him. Neji spotted her there, standing still in a typical defensive position of the Hyuga and her charged with the speed he could muster. As he reached striking range he thrust his palm forward only to have Hinata duck. That is not what surprised him the most. The Hyuga style of combat completely used their hands to fight, disabling the opponent's chakra pads. But that is not what Hanada did. She somehow maneuvered into a position and kicked Neji in the shoulder with her legs stretched out completely. There was a loud snapping noise that soon followed. 
Neji screamed in pain and collapsed, realizing that most of his shoulder was broken in different places all over his shoulder bone. He collapsed, unable to scream anymore. Seeing this, the proctor announced, Winner Hanada Hayuga. Bannister, answer me Naruto, what the hell was that? asked Ten Ten. Naruto grinned and said, That, beautiful, is the uni by Akugan. Ten Ten blushed at the word he had used to describe her and said, Uni? Naruto turned serious and said, A short name for unicorn. It grants newfound strength and power to the Byakugan, power that not even the regular version possess. It is much like the Angelos, a bloodline long thought lost, possessing its own jutsu styles and techniques. Nothing else is known other than the uni being a bloodline that is given, not born with it. There is no specific known information outside of the Hyuga clan. Ten Ten frowned and asked. That is honest at least but one last question. Why did Hinata's kick do so much damage? Naruto replied. Have you ever received a kick from a horse? Ten Ten merely winced and said. So she also receives the unicorn's leg muscle strength. That had to hurt. But why did you seem ready to kill her? Naruto ignored the last question as the rest of the group let the information sink in and turned around as Hinata came up the stairs. Naruto smiled and began to move forward to congratulate Hinata only to be tackled by said person. They both began to laugh and soon got off the stone floor and Hinata said without a stutter. You owe me two favors Naruto-kun. Naruto nodded and said. Yep that I do so my lady what will the first one be? Hinata smiles and says, shopping and you're paying for it, all of it. Naruto now instantly began to regret having done that bet and he would later swear that he heard a horse laughing in the background. Naruto was about to say something when Sasuke said, Naruto, you're up. It was true, the matching board now read Naruto Uzumaki vs Gara of the desert. No, Hinata began to cry while yelling to herself. Naruto looked at Hinata worried, Hinata what's wrong? Hinata answered. Gara is a monster. He is going to kill you, now you can't take me shopping. Everyone looked at Hinata as if she were insane, having worried over shopping instead of the man about to face a monster. Naruto smiled and responded as he got up, nothing short of the world ending will kill me Hinata. I have my dream to fulfill first so don't worry I will be fine. With that he moved to the stairs and confronted Gara. Just as soon as he was ready the proctor commenced the match. Gara began with a motionless attack of sand, sending long spikes of sand in the blonde's direction. Naruto did not hesitate and began to dodge and draw his right sword and began to move forward dodging sand attacks the whole way. As soon as he got close to Gara to actually attack him with his sword the damn sand would make very pointed spikes and he couldn't get near enough. That is it, he said to himself, an idea coming to mind. Increasing his speed Naruto angled his sword and began to cut indents on the ground. He finished his little dance having gone through a wide circle around Gara. Afterwards he sheathed his sword and stopped, Gara poised to strike again. Gara said, giving up Uzumaki, I thought you were better than that? Naruto grinned and clapped his hands to together while saying, I am. Dragon seal, demon chains. Immediately, the groves caused by Naruto's sword on the ground began to glow. From them huge chains erupted and coiled around Gara in a flash. As soon as he was incased in the bindings of steel, his sand, that had at that moment been floating around Gara, collapsed in heaps all around him. The Suna Nin were in complete shock. This had never happened, through the use of a simple seal Gara was completely immobilized. This seal, Naruto said, relies on the chakra used by demons, the more demonic chakra you use, the heavier the chains will become. They also absorb demonic chakra within a certain area making all your strength completely useless. He gazed at Gara and said. You seem to not have gotten much sleep as of late, let me fix that. His hands blurred so fast that not even the nearby Hokage could follow them and he said. Soul seal. Internal viewing. And he slammed his hand to Gara's chest. Gara's head dropped, chin resting on his chest. Naruto straightened up a bit and stared to the area above Gara. Just as sudden as the combat had stopped, the air above Gara was filled with three heads. Gara's own head floated there accompanied by one that appeared to be a monk while the last was horrible beyond description, roaring, the sound reverberating all around the arena. Naruto scowled and said, There is something wrong, 
This seal should hold the beast completely not let this form of intermediate control, monk what have you done? The monk then did something that monks should never do, swear, you little piece of shit, he said, when I get out of this shithole, I am going to tear you to pieces slowly and savor how you scream. The monk kept going on rant along the same lines but Naruto phased him out Nad was able to determine the cause of Gara's bloodlust and problems came from this little manipulative son of A. Naruto once more ran through a sequence of seals and said, Banishment seal, Reaper's palm. The three floating heads were soon joined by a skeletal hand that grabbed the monk and began to burn. The monk began to scream and just as sudden as it began both the monk and the hand vanished. The monstrous head stopped roaring and calmed down. The grotesque face began to crumble to reveal one of serene beauty. The face was near oval in shape with the locks of hair encasing the face, creating the emotion of serene peace. The face had its eyes closed and because it was a spirit, its skin color was unidentifiable. The eyes opened slowly and a smile spread across its full lips as she said, Finally, that damn monk is gone, in an obvious feminine voice. Naruto smiled at the spiritual heads, Gara's representation having seemed to relax. The woman focused her eyes on Naruto and said, Thank you boy for freeing me and my container of that menace. She turned to Gara, whose attention was now focused on her and slowly began to cry as she said, I am so sorry for all that I have done to you sweet child, how could I ever repay you? Gara looked at the spirit and back at Naruto, and smiled. We owe it all to him, the person whom has put us at complete peace. The women nodded and said, How should we reward him? Gara replied with an evil smile, We kick his ass in a clean fight as soon as he let us loose, is that all right? Naruto chuckled and replied, You can try, but a clean fight sounds fantastic. With that, he released the seals that bound Gara and he began to move once more before collapsing. Naruto rushed over and stared in awe as an odd seal spread out from under Gara, followed by an enormous amount of light that blinded all within the stadium. The light began to fade to reveal an unconscious Gara. The whole crowd let their jaws drop as they stared at the revealed person. There lay Gara, yes, but the seal had completely changed him. He now had red lock that ran down to the nape of his back and a much softer face. And if his new figure and the way his cloths rested on him, he most certainly wasn't a he anymore. He was a she. The matches were decent, but still, every single one of them could not hesitate and would have to train for in the finals, not one of them would hold back. He was thinking how he was going to train when a huge spike of energy exploded from the direction of the Hyuga compound. There was a little problem with said energy. It was not good. Without even hesitating, Naruto took to the roofs towards the Hyuga compound that poured with such evil energy that froze every person within the village, reminding people of the Kyubi attack but worse. Naruto's son came close to the compound and he had to sigh at the sight. Hanada was covered in an unusual black chakra surrounded by several dead clan elders, the rest staring at the girl in fear and shock. Hanada was cackling with murderous intent as she walked forward with a, die. Once more Naruto did not hesitate, saying quietly to himself, dragon seal, darkness binding. He appeared behind Hanada and hugged her, releasing the jutsu into Hanada's very soul. The dark energy subsided almost immediately and she collapsed in his arms. Naruto slowly laid Hinata on the ground as an elder said, quickly remove her eyes so they can be given to someone wart, and he never finished as his body split right down the middle in an explosion of blood. You ing fools, hollered Naruto, you don't know how close you just sent Konoha to annihilation. Hiyashi started at the boy in shock and asked, what do you mean boy? By the way I don't mind the loss of the elder, they did not have my permission for this. Naruto said, good. If you understand the uni, the bearers are free spirits. They don't like to be contained, always out in the fresh air. If you threaten them with removing their eyes, well, the uni ceases to exist replaced by the Nevral, the horse of death and destruction. Its release guarantees the death of millions, for it cannot be killed unless you destroy its body to ashes and spread them to the winds. Hiyashi let his jaw drop as he said, I guess the saying is true, with something good there is always something evil. Exactly, said Naruto, and just for your information the Nevral, would make the Kyubi attack feel like a strong poke. The elders surrounding him all drew in breaths at seeing the trouble but their faces became extremely pale when Naruto finished. On a scarecrow. Then, and only then, did they realize how close they came to damnation.
Almost I mean, excluding some retarded few. That is a lie, that by, was all he said as he also died in an explosion of blood. Anyone insults Hanada in any way, he snarled, holding his sword in an offensive position, I will kill you in the most painful way possible, am I clear? Many nodded. Hiyashi smirked at the luck of his daughter. Many believe the man to be a clawed bastard but in truth he was a good man, only pretending to be cold for his daughter's safety. They all heard a groaning and turned as Hanada got off the ground and saw the bodies around her. She was about to say something when she saw Naruto. Immediately her face cheered up as she yelled, Yay shopping. Even the Hayuga had to sweat drop at that. Here was a girl who moments ago had been facing the elders but that all changed with one guy. Yeah, Naruto said, a deal is a deal, I take you shopping, and pay for it all. Every man winced. He had apparently lost a bet and had to go shopping, he also had to pay for it all. Damn, talk about piss poor luck. Hiyashi chuckled as he saw Hanada dragging the boy out the main gate with a look that said, save me. Oh 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 his day had gone from bad to worse. They had been shopping for an hour and Naruto had already spent what looked like nearly 1 million yen and it did not look like it would end anytime soon. Many men had seen the small army of Naruto's carrying what seemed to be a few skyscra worth of bags following Hanat and could not help but smirk at the boy's misfortune, till their own girlfriends, wives told them to take them shopping. By the afternoon the bill had amounted to nearly 25 million yen. The army moved to the Hayuga house to drop of the goods while Hinata and Naruto went to lunch at a nearby dango shop. At this point Naruto wanted anything to happen, anything to get him away from the hell, I mean shopping. As they sat down and gave their order, a voice called out, Hinata, over here. The two turned as Kuranai and Anko joined them at their table. After they had given their orders, both women turned to Hinata. Anko just asked, so, what are you doing with this hunk? Naruto blushed as he sat and Hinata responded with a, I won a bet and now he has to take me shopping all day, and pay for it. Once more every man in hearing range winced and all ladies could not help but smile. So, Kuranai asked, is the hunk willing to take us with you? Naruto tried to shake his head in a no but then both older women used the fearsome puppy eyes jutsu. Damn it, fine I guess you two can come along, he said. Several hours had passed after that the spent money amounted to about, 999 million yen. The Naruto clone army was several thousand clones in size, each carrying two skyscra worth of stuff. Naruto was now walking Anko and Kuranai home, being that both lived relatively next to each, in the same apartment complex that is. He even walked them into their respective home. That happened after they had asked him if he was part of a clan. Without telling them his family name, he did inform them of the harem issue, which gave the three of them lustful grins as on unison they all agreed to be the first three. After he had dropped the elder two, Naruto and the remaining clones in the shopping army had taken Hinata home. As they entered the courtyard, Naruto realized that he was in a literal city of boxes. Naruto hid the tears from Hinata as he realized what hell he had just gone through. Naruto-san, Hinata, I need to speak to the both of you came the voice of Hiyashi Hayuga as they both reached the main house. They nodded and followed the man to the central room, just after the clones had deposited their loads and puffed away. When they reached said room they all sat themselves down, Naruto across from Hinata and Hiyashi. Now I know that you know of your family correct? the father asked. Naruto nodded as the man continued, Now, you father made several contacts with women from all over the world. Marriage contracts, to be exact. He did this knowing that the council would force you into marriages so he risked the chance that you would be like him and chose women who all had the traits that he would love. It was a gamble but it proved true. You are almost exactly like him when it comes to the matters of the heart, even his pranking abilities and ramen addiction, to his pride probably. Now, on to the matter at hand. Your father arranged a contract with my family, one among many. So will you accept Hinata's hand in marriage? Hanada had to use every ounce of her new will to not faint at what had just been said. Naruto took it in stride and, with a true smile, replied, Of course I do, if she will have me that is. Both of the males looked at Hanada, only to see a blur pass by. Hiyashi focused back to Naruto, only to see his daughter atop him, lips locked with his. Hiyashi smiled and said, I guess that was a yes, elsewhere. 
A seal began to glow in many offices across the land. All of the leaders in said offices looked to the seal that signified for them a time of union. As if it had been rehearsed, all of them said in unison, It's about time. Back to Naruto. Naruto sat with Hinata outside of the main building after having had dinner with the Hyuga main family. Neji had been welcomed in but the moment he saw Hinata with her arm around Naruto, he left in rage. The couple sat in the open air. Naruto asked, Hinata, you plan any training regimen for yourself? Hinata shook her head as he said, The clan has no advice on that so why do you ask? Naruto smiled. I know of a valley that was used by my clan to relax and train in any ability they gained. Would you like to come with me? The answers you seek may be there. Just you and me. Hanada nodded. After Naruto kissed her goodbye, Hanada went in and told her father of what Naruto had told her. Giving his permission, Hanada went to her room and prepared to leave. The people of Konoha and the visitors of Konoha moved towards the stadium. The time had come for the Chunin exams to finally begin after a month of anxious waiting. The Chunin hopefuls were all standing before the Proctor Hayate, did not kill him off, did not feel like it, waiting for him to start the exam. What was bothering them was the little fact that two of them were missing, Naruto and Hinata. Hayate looked around and announced, Naruto Uzumaki and Hinata Hayuga, please step down here or face disqualification. But before he could continue a sound of beating wings spread over the arena. All of the people in the stadium looked up and stared right into the eyes of an immense golden dragon. It landed in an enormous explosion of dirt and gravel as it landed on the ground with a really loud thump. As the dust cleared, a young woman stepped out followed by a young man. Hanada and Naruto moved towards the center of the field, surprising everyone. Naruto was still the same in every way as he smiled and made the peace sign to the smiling Hokage. Hanada on the other hand was completely changed in attire. Instead of wearing the bulky outfit she now wore something that was different. Her clothes were silverfish in color and loose at the bottom of her tight t-shirt, which should off her round breasts. Over it, she wore an open jacket, simple in design but when it was looked at closer, it seemed that there were many holes that one could slip in kanai or other weapons. Her pants were loose but tight, especially around her nice round ass, and had the same purpose as the jacket, yet one could see the hilts of close-range combat daggers, not throwing weapons. Otherwise she was still the same except for the lance on her back. It was near seven feet long, six of them being the shaft itself while the remaining foot was the blade itself. The shaft was a plain white with horsetail hair hanging off the end and the blade was pointy to thrust through enemies with ease and the twist in the blade allowed for limited slashing ability. Hayate glanced in surprised at the sudden disappearance of the dragon but shook his head and said, All right now we can begin. In a loud voice, the sick man announced, Naruto Uzumaki versus Kiba in Azuka. Then the rest of the hopefuls moved off the field, but Hanada did not leave before kissing Naruto and murmuring something in his ear, at which he blushed. She smiled a mischievous smile as she walked away seductively, receiving death glares from the other Naruto fangirls. Naruto on the other hand was receiving approving stares from many others and one extremely pissed off dog boy. Ready to do this Kiba? Naruto told his opponent, with excitement evident in his voice. Kiba snarled and said, Shut up, you can't have Hanada, she is mine. Naruto squinted his eyes in slight anger as he responded in a cold voice, either not having heard the proctor start the match, she is not yours nor mine, she is her own person and worthy of respect and love. Kiba snarled again and said, No, she is just the woman who will bear my children, whether she wants to or not, for that is all she is worth. Kiba's proud demeanor instantly gave away as an immense killer intent froze his very lungs. She, sounded Naruto's arctic voice, is not some breeding factory for your perversions Kiba. Hanada is a living being with free will and not a thing to use for one's sick pleasures. I had been planning on making this an enjoyable fight for both of us but that is not going to happen. And with that Naruto vanished and reappeared in front of Kiba and punched him in the gut, launching him back towards the arena wall in a viscous blow. Huge chunks of the wall exploded outwards as Kiba rammed into it by the force of Naruto's punch. Many could only wince on sight of it while many women among the crowd felt appeased as they knew the boy got what he had coming. Naruto stood staring at the pile of stones, waiting for Kiba to pull himself out of them. Kiba finally pulled himself out and walked towards Naruto with a look of unimaginable rage on his face. 
At this point Naruto looked around and realized that Akamaru was not around, where is Akamaru? Kiba's rage subsided as he said, he has a cold and was not able to fight. Naruto nodded and said, so he is worthy of respect and not Hanada? Kiba's rage returned but again subsided as his point hit home. Not realizing that he spoke out loud he said, I was always taught that women were below men, only to be used at our wishes. Under the Alpha, I was always taught as where they should be. Naruto smiled as he said, we are all on equal level. When it comes to packs and such, yes they may be under the Alpha, but even there they were the ones that guided the males in life. They were always what brightened the day. Also Alphas never thought of women like you just did, at least not the ones that I know of. Women are worthy of all forms of respect, just like animals that fight next to us are. Kiba looked to the ground as he thought about what he just been told. Suddenly he looked to Naruto and said, You may be right, but that still does not mean I am going to let you win. Naruto grinned as Kiba charged at him with a yell of, Sasuga. The whirling whirlwind that was Kiba's attack came at Naruto, destroying some of the ground as it went. Naruto had been expecting his attack and had prepared to stop with, Counter Wind. He thrust his palm forward and from it a whirlwind came forth and came into contact with Kiba, going around the attack, and slowing it down. As Kiba tumbled from the air he was able to say, how? Naruto smiled as time seemed to slow down and said, the wind launched from my palm acts like a counter, moving in the opposite direction of Sasuga, it literally stopped it in mid-air, last is, good night. Time resumed its normal speed and Naruto kicked Kiba in the face, knocking him out cold. Hayate looked to Kiba, who did not get up and announced, winner, Naruto Uzumaki. The stadium exploded into cheers, as every woman in the stadium cheered for the guy who defended their honor. The guys knew that they would never be able to mess with the kid ever again, or face the rage of their wives, girlfriends and women in general. Will the next combatants come down? Hanada Hayuga vs Tamari Sabaku. As Naruto moved towards the contestant balcony, he came across the next pair to fight and wished both, good luck. Both girls smiled mischievously and before Naruto could react, Tamari had him locked at the lips and Ed in pleasure. Before he could say anything again Hinata said, I know that you need to have more than one wife and knew that Tamari loved you after saving her sister, so I explained to her what you told me and she is already planning when to catch you. Gara was there and also heard, placing in her name to the list of approvals. Like I told you in the valley, if a new woman wants to enter the harem and you love her, she has to pass out approval before entering, see ya later dear, all in one breath. Konkuro and Dosu had been standing nearby, glaring at each other when they both said, lucky bastard. Naruto for his part, was shocked, he had started out with one then jumped to three, knowing his luck, there would be more by the end of the day. He sighed in exhaustion, thinking how busy he would be in the future, not truly minding it though. Arena, Hanada looked at Tamari as the proctor announced the beginning of the match. Hanada simply said, I get him first, I hope you understand that. Tamari smiled evilly and replied, only if you beat me you do, and even not then. At this Hanada said with a raised eyebrow, what do you mean by that? Tamari smiled and said, after what he did here to Kiba, women will flock to him in droves. You would have to beat them all back. It was true was the wanting glares of Kurunai, Anko, Ten Ten, Hana, Kin, and Ayame looked at Naruto. Kurunai had just recently broken up with Asuma for cheating on her with another woman, losing all faith in men. Luckily, Naruto restored that faith, proving to her that not all men were s. Damn, sighed Hanada. That means I have to move faster, we will have to cut this match short then, grasping her lance. I guess so. For you will see me with him before you could blink, replied Tamari. Tamari quickly grasped her fan and wiped at Hanada, sending a huge gust of wind straight at her. Hanada spread her legs, making herself a narrow target and propped her lance, tip first and what could only be described as a huge circle appeared and acted like a shield and stopped the attack. With a small thrust and a battle cry from Hanada the circle was rushed forward and because of Temari's shock she was unable to dodge so it slammed into her very painfully and knocked her out like a light. Winner. Hanada Hayuga. Announced Hayate. The crowd cheered but Hanada seemed to ignore them as she ran for the stairs that led to the challenger's booth. Upon seeing Naruto waiting there with a smile she ran into his arms and laid a deep one on him. Afterwards, 
she murmured into his ear, Me first, all right dear. Naruto sighed and answered, Yes ma'am. The next three fights went by to quickly to notice. Konkuro and Dosu ended in a draw. Shikamaru surrendered to Sakura because he did not feel like fighting and Sasuke beat Shino because he had an insecticide bomb that sent Shino running in outright fear. The four legendary bloodline bearers looked at each other and said at the same time, Time for the titans to clash, eh. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.